Hello everyone and welcome back to Wonderland Explorers. Today we are here in Asheville, North Carolina at the Biltmore. Yeah, this is going to be a fun-filled day checking out the house. We've already done the grounds. Yes. We've done the gardens. That's in another vlog. But today <laughs> we're checking out the house itself, the stables, all things about this amazing property. Yes, and we cannot wait to share it with you. So come along as we explore. To enter to the Biltmore home, you have to have a pass and a reservation time. Now we would say, like, give yourself from the ticketing center to here, 45 minutes, because there's a lot of ground that you need to cover. You have that opulent entrance to kind of let you wander and explore before you even make it into the home. You are entered with parking lots A, B, C, D, or E. We would suggest going C through E because you get to ride the trolley up to the house. Parking lots A and B, if you park there, you have to walk. And if they're full, you have to drive all the way back around the estate to get into C, D, and E again. It's just our suggestions. Also on the trolley tour, they kind of give you a little bit more history with the ride up to the house and then things found here on the property. So the keynote that I want to tell you before you enter the house, if you need to use the restroom, you need to do it before you go because there is no restrooms in this home. You need to go over to the stables, but the stables is actually really fun. There's restaurants, there's food, there's shops there. You'll probably visit the stables after you leave as well. So let's go show you those real quick before we enter the home. So the stables played a very important role for the Vanderbilts, not just to hold the carriages and all the horses from the travelers and the Vanderbilts themselves, but actually above the stables is where all the men used to actually sleep. So they kept things separate. So the female servants would be in the main house and the males would be actually over above the stables themselves. So it's kind of funny to see that history now play out today when you're walking around here and it's like there's little eateries and there's people drinking wine and, and having hot dogs. It's, it's still just a lot of fun. I would probably recommend checking out the stables to get something to eat if you're coming to the Biltmore early in the day. So if you didn't have anything for breakfast off property, this is a great place to come. They have like little croissants, they have little finger foods, they have coffee and whatnot. Just, just as you walk into the stable, you'll see it right there on your right. There's like a little bakery there. There's other little places too where you can grab like more lunchtime food as well. But we would probably suggest stopping here first, getting like a coffee and like a small pastry, and it kind of gets you primed to go into the house because th this tour can be very long. Depending on how quickly people are moving, it, it, it's quite a bit. And afterwards, I like to go back to the stables and look at the shops and maybe get lunch or something like that. Because, you know, after all, it's, you, you walked all those steps. You, you burned all those calories. You gotta, you gotta get something to eat. No, but it's a lot of fun. And also too, you know, if you wanna get like a portrait or if you wanna get some artwork or if you wanna get some books or candy or anything like that, I'd probably say wait till you finish the tour. And that way you can just kind of get on the bus and head back to your car afterwards. Just sort of makes things a little bit easier. So we have found a bench just next to the house and the stables. Not a bad place to be relaxing right now, waiting for our reservation time to be called at 11.15. We're watching though, the line has gotten pretty long. We checked before we sat down, I guess once the reservation time is called, then you can enter the line. But it looks like it moves fairly quickly. It looks a little hot, not a lot of coverage. So I would probably suggest that if you're coming here, book early in the day, because it, it does get a little toasty. So you're gonna wanna. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, like I said, we're underneath these beautiful trees. I'm staring at the house. I, I can't think of a better spot to be waiting to go look at this beautiful mansion. <laughs> Our reservation time has now been called. We're gonna head in line. You can see how long it gets. So not a lot of, not a lot of coverage. It's pretty sunny outside, so you might wanna keep that in mind. But we're so excited to head in. Let's go get in line.
making our way into the entry hall, we are first finding ourselves in front of the Winter Garden. Now this area held a very special place where it would actually exhibit different types of plants throughout the year. In addition, they would actually have dinners here. Great place to have a party. And also too, look at the roof. It's absolutely beautiful. Lots of natural sunlight in here. You could just imagine these parties gathering around these fountains, seeing all these beautiful tropical plants. This is just so gorgeous. As you enter the house, you come into the Winter Garden where you have a glass roof where it illuminates the fountain sculpture, Boy Stealing Geese by Carl Bitter. What a beautiful room. After the Winter Garden, you go into the billiard room. This is where house guests play dominoes and billiards and enjoyed refreshments. The custom oak billiard tables were made in 1895. Up next, we are led into the banquet hall. This impressive room was seven story high ceilings and Flemish tapestries from the mid 1500s was the scene of the evening parties and celebrations. Guests of the Vanderbilts enjoyed elegant dining that began promptly at 8 p.m., often the highlight of a stay at Biltmore. These elaborate ceremony affairs featured up to 10 courses and as many as five different wine pairings, illustrating George Vanderbilt's interest in fine wines and live musical entertainment. Next on our tour, we have the breakfast room. Guests of the Vanderbilts were served both breakfast and lunch in here. The portrait above the display case is of Cornelius Vanderbilt, George Vanderbilt's grandfather and founder of the family fortune. George collected a variety of works in his lifetime, including two paintings, Young Algerian Girl and Child with Orange by French Impressionist Pierre Renoir. Artist John Sargent, the most acclaimed society portraitist of his era, painted the two large family portraits. The salon intended to be a formal sitting area in the French style. This room was never completed in George Vanderbilt's lifetime. Today, it features original furnishings including two landscape paintings by Impressionist Claude Monet. The music room was completed in 1976. Like the salon, it was unknown why it was unfinished in George Vanderbilt's time. During World War II, priceless paintings from the National Gallery of Art were secretly stored here for safekeeping. The Lanai is a covered room offering mesmerizing views of the Biltmore's Deer Park and the Blue Ridge Mountains beyond. It is an extension of the adjoining tapestry gallery. With the French doors open, the Vanderbilts would enjoy this delightful outdoor space overlooking the beautiful countryside. Up next, we have the Tapestry Gallery. In this 90-foot long room, the Flemish tapestries on the wall are part of the 1530s set known as the Triumph of the Seven Virtues. Up next, we are led into the library. This room is a testament to George Vanderbilt's passion for books. It contains nearly half of his 22,000 volume collection, which ranges in subjects from American and English fiction to world history, religion, philosophy, art, and architecture. Look up to admire the Chariot of Aurora painted in the 1720s by Italian artist Giovanni Pellegrini. As we climb up the grand staircase, we come upon the second floor living hall. 
This creation of Biltmore was a collaborative effort between George Vanderbilt, architect Richard Morris Hunt, and landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted. Artist John Singer Sargent visited Biltmore in 1895 to paint Hunt, which is on the left, considered to be the Dean of American Architecture, and Olmsted on the right, who designed Central Park and the U.S. Capitol grounds and many other parks. From the second floor living hall, we are led into Mr. Vanderbilt's bedroom. George Vanderbilt's bedroom features a gilded wall covering and 17th century Portuguese Baroque furniture. His bed looks quite small, but his room is massive. From Mr. Vanderbilt's bedroom, we are led to the oak sitting room, located between the family's bedrooms. This room functioned as a private sitting area for the Vanderbilts, where they relaxed, planned their day, and hosted close friends. It also served as a gallery where George Vanderbilt showcased his prize collections. From the oak sitting room, we are led to Miss Vanderbilt's bedroom. This feminine retreat became Edith Vanderbilt's room upon her marriage at the age of 25. Purple and gold silk fabrics and furnishings in the Louis XV style decorated this oval room with its rich painted ceilings. From Miss Vanderbilt's bedroom, we turn left, we head upstairs, walk down a hallway, we are led to the third floor living hall. Guests in nearby rooms came here to read, listen to music, and unwind. As we come down the grand staircase and make our way to the recreation area and basements, you are led there through the stone hallway. Here you can see one of the foundation walls. It took almost two years to build the foundation and footing that extends down about 29 feet. From the stone hallway, you are led into the Halloween room. In April 1924, Cornelia Vanderbilt married the Honorable John Francis Amherst Cecil. In 1925, the couple spent weeks painting these wall scenes for the New Year's Eve party. Up next, we have a bowling alley. House guests enjoyed one of the nation's first bowling alleys in a private residence. Here we have the swimming pool. This 70,000 gallon indoor pool was heated and still has its original underwater lighting. The gymnasium. Keeping fit and healthy were popular pastimes at the beginning of the 20th century. Needle baths along the back of the wall were equivalent to modern shower massages. We now move away from the recreation area and basement and into the servant's domain. Biltmore functioned much like a luxury hotel, requiring an exceptional staff to ensure day-to-day -day operations ran smoothly, even to the coordination of carriage rides. Here we have the rotisserie kitchen. Roasted meats such as venison and turkey were prepared here to keep the smoke and the grease out of the other kitchens. Here we have the beautiful main kitchen. Most of the prep work and cooking occurred here under the direction of the chef who led one of the most important staff positions in the house. He led a team of more than a dozen kitchen workers who were responsible for preparing meals ranging from staff breakfast to gala dinners. From the kitchen pantry, we are led to the servants' dining room. Up to 30 domestic staff members worked in the Billmore House under the supervision of the head housekeeper, who ran the daily operations, and the head butler, who oversaw the male staff, including footmen and houseboys. Meals prepared in the Biltmore's kitchen involved extensive planning and coordination, all of which took place out of the sight from the guest. Staff took great care tending to every detail from the floral arrangements on the table to the menu of delicacies and estate grown bounties. Main Laundry and Drying Room The main laundry was as busy and well equipped as one in a large hotel with laundresses working into the evening to wash and dry bed, bath and table linens. Easing their work was a system of electrical drying racks located in the adjoining drying room. We now make our way back upstairs to look at the view of the banquet hall from the bachelor's wing. The first room in the bachelor's wing is the smoking room. Male guests enjoyed after dinner cigars, pipes, and brandy in this room.
On the bachelor's wing hallway, we are now led to the gun room. Hunting parties were a popular pastime on a country estate. Guests selected guns from George Vanderbilt's collection to use on their excursions. This now completes our visit to the Biltmore House. We will now take our exploration to the stable courtyard. Stepping inside of the stables, there's a bunch of things to check out here. There's a stable cafe if you want to get something to eat. There's also a confectionery, so if you're looking for some sweet treats to take home with you, they definitely have that here. There's also the book binder, which if you're looking for history about Biltmore and the Asheville area, they have books for sale in there as well as artwork. And there's some pretty nice pieces, so if you want to have like a nice photo of Asheville or excuse me, the Biltmore to take home with you, definitely stop in there and check that out. There's also a Christmas shop and a toy maker, so there's a little bit of something for everybody. So the kids are covered. If you want a Christmas ornament from the Biltmore, more, they have you. There's also a big gift shop, so their main gift shop, which I think we're going to head into because there's a little bit of everything in there. There's also wine tastings, there's like finger foods at times. It's a pretty awesome little place. Things I like about the Carriage House shop is that they have wine here. So if you don't want to go over to the winery, if you're pressed for time, just stop in here. They have a lovely selection of wines here. They also have things like uh, like mustards and jellies and jams and all types of spreads. So if you want like a little something to take home, remember your trip. That's what I love about this place. They also have like a huge collection of lounge flies and spirit jerseys, which we're just finding so funny being from Disney and mostly covering Disney parks and how much lounge fly Dooney and Burke and Disney has a representation there. It looks like Biltmore has gotten so involved with them and there's multiple lines, multiple collections for different seasons. We just had so much fun looking at that stuff and of course they have t-shirts and jackets and sweatshirts and all those types of things here. There's even home decor so if you're looking for something just to have around your house to remember your time here at Biltmore. They have you covered here in the shop. This is really, this is the great place to stop after you come out of the main house from your tour and find something to take home. made our way out of the tour for the Biltmore house. It's absolutely incredible. I know it was a little bit different of how we had to like shoot this and put mm -hmm. this together for us. They don't allow vlogging inside the house and I understand no. that. Yeah. You know, people, they want their quiet, they want to be able to respect the time, enjoy everything around them, totally get that. But we've been here so many times. It is so beautiful to see this house change throughout the seasons. I think a big thing is, is that the, the rooms change depending on when you come here. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna see something new every time. And I think even with what we shared with you today, we are just touching on a small tidbit of the history yep. and the home. And every time you come through, there's different rooms that may be opened. Yeah. And even if you are in the same room, like you had said, there's different artifacts that they place and put um, on display. Yeah. So I want you to like really realize like, oh, I've seen it through you guys. I don't need to go. Yeah. No, that's not the case at all. I, like you really should come and experience this for yourself Absolutely. if you're able to yeah. and it doesn't matter when you come or if you come like several times like we came several times throughout the year yeah. and it was always different it's a different experience even with the handheld like narrations yeah. what you learn about in the house is different like because we're like they didn't even talk about this or they didn't oh, even talk yeah. about that or we didn't even go to that room and so yes you're gonna learn something new every time you come and visit and that was a new addition that we had this time was that they're now including like the audio tour you yeah. you, you actually had to pay for your house admission or if you had the and pass. then you had to pay for the uh, the audio separately yeah. so everything's kind of like rolled into one now you pay a little bit more but I think that's better because it gives you more context to the house yes. I think it improves the overall tour one room that we did not get to see this time that I think stands out is the the, uh, the Louis suite oh, and yeah. it's it's so beautiful but I think we're gonna come back closer to the holidays we heard it will probably be reopened around that time yes. that'll be awesome to see other favorite rooms of mine in particular like the library is number one for me mm -hmm. like hands down just so cool the billiards room seeing the bedrooms and just how it's just so opulent it's so gorgeous I mean all these worldly things that were collected and then how it's like purposely <laughs> displayed and used functionally within the house and these are it's some things so in this house that you will never see anywhere else in the world. Oh, absolutely not. And I think like that's what a, the fun and like interesting facts about it, like the chess sets, the draperies. Yep. I mean, all of the little intricate details yep. and how modern he was for his time. Yep. 
So yes, hundred percent. Go on and on and on. The only other thing I'd say, I think I would leave off, like uh -huh. leave on, is the fact that like if you have time to do some of the tours, yes. like the guided tours or like the behind the scenes tours or the rooftop tours, they are not gimmicky. They are no. so worth it because you will see things that you will not see at all and you will learn things that you will not learn at all when you're just on like the self-guided tour yes. it gives you a completely different perspective and as I, like I was saying before like if you're an engineer like go do like the sub basement tour where you learn about the construction of it I that see. is so awesome like if you want to see like how the servants actually live day in and day out they have like an upstairs downstairs tour yeah. which that was kind of neat so again you're just seeing the house through a different lens learning some additionally different kind of things <laughs> So picking up with where you had just mentioned, I yeah. think sometimes if you do want to do those tours, I would put some pre-planning into coming and visiting yep. Biltmore. Yep. Even if that's like, hey, we're here for a long weekend and we yep. just count into town, we don't want to go to Biltmore the first day, still go to the ticket office and like kind of plan out the rest of your weekend and what you want to do yep. here. I would say at least, at least take two days to come and enjoy the Biltmore estate because yep. we've just did the gardens and the house and we still haven't even touched on all the other wonderful options that they have here. Yeah, we haven't gone to Deer Park. No. We haven't taken you to Antler Hill. The street so wine tasting. It just means we're gonna have to come back here again for you guys <laughs> we're looking forward to it. i think the next time we'll be back here will definitely be around the holidays and like the holidays at biltmer oh so beautiful oh my gosh I, honestly i think that's the best time of the year to come so if you have any questions about where to eat or questions about how to plan or what to do and you want to ask please leave them in the comments below we'll let you know yeah. we've tried i feel like every restaurant here at biltmore they do have oh. some delicious food <laughs> and dips and snacks and treats so leave any comments or questions below and we'll be more than happy to help. Well, everyone, I think that's going to do it from our time here at the Biltmore House in beautiful Asheville, North Carolina. We hope you enjoyed coming along with us on this tour. We're going to be back. We, we promise we'll be here for the holidays. So just you wait for that one. It's going to be well worth it. If you like the video, make sure to hit like and subscribe. And as always, until next time, friends. Bye. bye.